everyone! Welcome to my weekly edition of Show Me How It's Done. My name is Lauren Rabonis and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. If this is your first time joining me, welcome. If you're somebody who tunes in all the time, thank you so much. Please make sure to comment in the little description of where you're from and where you're tuning in from because I always love to take a look and I will just thank you in advance for joining me. So today I have a very special card. You might be wondering why there's a picture of a dog here and that is because this is my beautiful dog Ara. I didn't want to get her into my craft room here because she would knock over everything being so happy, but it is her seventh birthday today. So I am making a little card for her for her birthday and we're just celebrating Aura and um, just my fun little pup that she is. So she's an Alaskan Malamute. And as such, she loves cold. She loves anything cold. She loves winter. She loves frozen treats. But one of her favorite treats is when I take frozen bananas and there's this machine, it's called Yo Nanas. And it's great for kids to make winter um, ice cream with, but I use it for Aura. So I take frozen bananas and I run it through the machine and she gets this like frozen ice cream kind of thing, but that doesn't have dairy and all the sugar in it because of course she can't have all of that and uh, so that's what she's going to have for her birthday tonight and in that theme I'm going to make this adorable little card that kind of looks like an ice cream cone and um, we're going to celebrate just somebody who's special in our life. So I love the sentiment. It says, life is sweeter with you. And I truly feel that about Ara. But of course you could use your the cherry on top or celebrate. And this was a really great set if you needed a Valentine sentiment. So this Share a Milkshake bundle is in our mini catalog right now. That catalog is only good until the end of April. So bear in mind, things may start selling out. So if you like it, make sure to either order at the bottom of my page, I've put my website, or contact your demonstrator if you're not here in Canada. And just a note with that, if you are in Canada and you don't have a demonstrator, please message me your mailing address because before the end of March, I need to have my mailing list set up for the new annual catalog. And if you need a copy, I'm more than happy to send it to you through that um, that mailing sector. But unfortunately, it costs me an arm and a leg if I don't do it through stamping up um, because yay, Canada post rates are so high, but Canada, um, sorry, stamping up gives us a really good shipping rate if I get them all of my addresses before the end of March. So if you're in Canada, you need somebody, just let me know, I'm happy to send you that catalog. Okay, so this card is a really fun because not only does it feature the Share a Milkshake bundle, it also has a really fun technique. I don't know if you can see this in the back here. This is my dots and spots. So that is going to be something really, really fun that we're going to play with today. And I'm just realizing my weight embossing powder is hiding over there. So just give me two seconds. You know, I was set up. I'll get it. And, oh, that's better. We need those. And we need the hand-drawn dots embossing or um, stamp set to do our embossing with. So this is a massive set. You can either use one of our large blocks here. This one is letter F. Or if you've got the Stamparatus, that would make your life so much easier too. But I would hit my camera if I was to use the Stamparatus. So I'm not going to. We're just going to use the block today. So let's get going. I have posted all of the measurements for today's card in our description, but they are very simple. Um, basically, you need a card base of your choice. So I am using one of our in colors that I absolutely love and we're gonna use the ink for it too. This is Orchid Oasis. So if you love purple, then you can use that. If you're like, nah, I don't love purple because it's not for everybody, you could also sub out and use Bermuda Bay and that's for the card base and then we're just subbing it in for the layer of 
um, purple, I guess, that I'm using on the card too. So there's one idea with Bermuda Bay. But my card, we're going to use Orchid Oasis. So this paper, it measures four and one quarter by 11. And we've put a score mark down the middle at five and a half. So that when I fold this card in half, I've got a nice card that opens up and down like so. I need to move a couple things out of my way so that I actually have space to work here. But I will bring them back, sorry, as we're kind of talking about different layers. Okay, so now we get to have a little bit of fun. On the inside, we always just want something simple that you can write on. So I have cut myself just a piece of basic white. It's four by five and one quarter. And I'm just going to attach that right in here. You can later on, if you want, come back and stamp something in here, perhaps a little um, reading or another, you know, milkshake or ice cream cone. So that's completely up to you. Thank you for the greetings for Ara. She will be very happy. <laughs> and thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> Oh, okay, there's my inside of the card, super simple. Now on the front of the card, we need two pieces of white. Now one of them is going to be that four and a quarter by five and a, um, sorry, four by five and one quarter. And that's going to be our background that you can kind of see this little white layer around the side. I just wanted it to kind of differentiate between the Orchid Oasis and the, um, the dots and spots that we're going to do. So this piece can get popped up on dimensionals. And then we're actually going to set this base aside and concentrate just on the techniques for this dots and spots background. And I have to give credit for that coin of phrase to a fellow demonstrator named Alison Okamitsu. She used um, this technique on a card with the Sweet Citrus Bundle um, a while back, and I thought the name was just so cute, so I decided we're going to play with that technique today as well. So yay dots and spots. Okay, so there's my base. Let's set this guy aside. The next piece of basic white that you need is just slightly smaller than our original. So you'll remember this one was four inches across. So you're going to make this one three and seven eighths. This one is five and a half down, five and one eighth. So you're just taking an eighth of an inch off and that is all that you're going to have showing around the edge. Okay, so three and seven eighths five and one eighth is the measurement for this. And now you're going to need to gather a few supplies. So the first thing that you need is some sort of scrap because we're going to be doing some inky blending and some messy work. And of course, we don't want to do that on our desk. The next thing that you'll need is three colors that you'd like for your card. So I have decided to go with Daffodil Delight, Asian craze would also look gorgeous. Melon Mambo and Orchid Oasis. Those are my three. And then you need three blending brushes because of course we're doing three different colors and we really don't want to mix and match any colors in between that. You also need your Versamark ink and your white embossing powder. Clear would also work for this technique. You would just see the dot shapes, but you wouldn't see the white there. And uh, it would just give you kind of a fun look as well. Also, while you're gathering things, grab your Wink of Stella. You'll want that later. And then if you have a water painter, that would be ideal filled with a little water. Mine is old, it's the old blue color, but of course we have new white ones. And if you don't have this, because this is going to be how we get the spots on here, just grab a little dish with some water and I'll sh you can actually just use your fingertips to splatter water too. 
So those are all the materials you need. I'll give you just two seconds to grab those while I get myself situated. Sorry, I have to get a few things out of my way so they don't get splattered. <laughs> that might help. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to lay down our white um, embossing with the little um, hand-drawn dots stamp set here. Okay, so inking that guy up with my Bursa mark. And I'm going to make sure that covers the entire piece of paper here. I like to give it a few seconds because of course we want all those dots on. You might want to even stand up. This is where the um, Stamparatus is great because if you've missed a spot, you can always come back and it'll line up perfectly. But we'll just hope for the best here. That looks pretty good. Um, I think I was stamping with something red earlier and maybe didn't quite get clean, but that's okay. All right, here we go. White embossing powder. Going to gently, usually I use a tray, but they are all hiding downstairs in my craft room because I have class tonight and I have lots of people coming over to create with me. So they're all set up for them. And there we go. White embossing powder. All good to go. And I just like to gently, gently tap, tap, tap to get the rest of this off. Okay, so it does look pink right now. That's okay. I'm going to end up um, doing stuff over top of this anyways. And I'm going to heat this and just move this one out of my way. I'll clean that up in a second. I have an overabundance of scraps. This one will do. Okay, let's do a little heating. You won't be able to really see much as this goes. Um, it will end up turning from this kind of powdery look to a nice bright white. Okay, so I'll try and stop halfway through so you can see that. So there, I've done half of it. Can we see the difference between the top half where it's fully heated, nice and shiny, and then this bottom part here that still has not been heated completely? It's very powdery. Still, this one's got a nice shimmer, and if I was to touch things, the powder's not coming off. I think I am happy with that. It's good to me. Okay, are you ready to get inky? So you'll need your three ink colors. So again, I've got my Daffodil Delight, Melon Mambo, and Orchid Oasis. 
It's up to you what order you do things in, but my preference is to go from the lightest color to the darkest because I find that if I start with the light and maybe I've done too much of the paper, I can easily color over it with a darker color and take on that hue, but I can't really go backwards. I couldn't start with the Orchid Oasis and then end up turning it into a daffodil section, okay? So your preference, but I'm going to start with Daffodil Delight. And we're doing about a third of the card with each of them. So with these blending brushes, we're just kind of rubbing in a circular motion across your ink. And this will pick up lots of the um, color in your ink pad. There go. Just start off the page a little bit in case there's any clumps of ink. Just want to start off and then go in a circular motion it's like you're brushing your teeth, but on the paper. Do you remember being a kid and dentists are always like, go in a circular motion, cross your teeth. Yeah, there we go. So that's very light. So I'm going to come in and do another round. The nice thing is you can always add color, but you can never take it away. So just slow and steady wins the race with this technique. I'm going to fill that top third this gorgeous yellow. There we go. So once you're happy, then you can go ahead and move on to the next color. Make sure to close that up and just double check you've grabbed the right brush because you don't wanna mix colors together. All right, we're picking up more ink circular motion here and this is going to take up my middle section so I like to go straight across the middle and then you can choose to either leave a little bit of white space or if you want if you color over top of the yellow you'll end up with kind of a blended color this turns a little orangish so totally your choice what you do there you can either have that white dividing line or you can give yourself that extra hue, kind of like a sunset. Oh, well, it's getting nice and bright. I love it, I love it, I love it. There we go. Okay, we've laid on our pink. I'm happy with that. Last but not least, we're going with Orchid Oasis. All right, oops. Need this one. Okay. Just a tiny bit. There we go. Okay, so this is your background, but you might be wondering, hey, how do I get those white spots? So that's where you're gonna grab a little Kleenex or a like a cloth and just add the teeniest, tiniest bit of water. You don't want it soaking, no drips whatsoever, but we're gonna just gently brush it over top. So I didn't wanna have that sitting on my desk, so I'm just gonna grab it now. Now, so I have made this super, super lightly wet, like it's barely wet to the touch and a Kleenex or paper towel works too. So we're just gently, gently, gently brushing off the card and you can see already that white's really shining through. Just continue down to the yellow section right there. So that's how you get all those um, ink pieces off of your embossed section. So you have to emboss first, that's the key. And then after that, you're good to go. So keep this on the, um, the little scrap because we have our dots, but now we need some spots. 
So you can either take that little cup of water that I mentioned and dip your fingers in and just kind of like flick water onto here. So that would almost be like having a pile of water here. You just dip and flick like that. Or if you've got the aqua painters, you're just going to gently tap, tap, tap some water. And it's going to be a gradual process. This won't all happen at the same time. But as those dots kind of start building up on here, they're going to set and they're going to start changing the color of the ink under them. So go slowly because you can always add more. You can't take them away. And the water's nice because it doesn't really matter if it accidentally gets on something on your desk too. It'll just dry. So I like to just kind of have a bunch of water, tap it out. So you can see hopefully some of these dots, they're starting to grow, starting to set. And then you just keep adding as you want. There we go. I think I'm quite happy with that because I can see still I have some dots here that are still kind of growing. They will uh, they'll set soon for me. So we do all of this first because this needs a chance to dry. You can use your heat tool and dry it, but I just kind of prefer to give it ch a chance to just naturally dry. So what I'm going to do is set this to the side and we'll have to come back and finish working on that later on. So now is your time where you guys would want to bring out your stamp set and start cutting and coloring a bunch of the pieces that you need, okay? So let me get you started with what you're going to do. You need the largest circle from the Stylish Shapes dies. And then from the Share a Milkshake, there's this kind of, um, it almost looks like waffles. So we've got two of those cut out of white. Oops, sorry. There you go. Two of those waffle pieces cut out. And then there is a waffle like cone. We need two of those. And I cut those two out of crumb cake. Then you're going to grab your stamp set and decide to use this little ice cream layer and then the coordinating die to cut out two of each color because we want two waffle cones. So I've got two Orchid Oasis, two of the Daffodil Delight, two of the Melon Mambo. And then there's an adorable little cherry down here and it does have a coordinating die as well. So that one I did with Poppy Parade because I wanted something very cherry red, but of course real red or even cherry cobbler would be great. And then the last thing that you're gonna want is some sort of just scrap that you can do your sentiment on. So I've just grabbed a piece of white and I am gonna go with that Life is Sweeter with You, mount it on a block. You do have to fussy cut this one. I'm sorry to break that to you, but it's okay. It'll be fine and you'll do, do just fine, okay? So we've got our black ink for that. Memento black, of course. Life is sweeter with you. Okay. I just try to, I don't know. I'm so disorganized today, guys. Sorry, there, there you are. Because I'm also in the middle of planning for my specialty class this month, I'm using the Seaside Bay Suite, so I had to kind of move all of that off the desk, and then I'm able to film, but here we go. So I'm just going to go gently beside my letters. It doesn't need to be up close. In fact, it will look worse if you go really close.
So one other fun fact, Ara's birthday today, March 14th, is on Pi Tuesday. So I don't know, depending on where you are, like here in Edmonton, we have Friesen Brothers has like $3.14 half pies. And so do a few of our other bakeries. So it's kind of fun, their way of celebrating the number pi. So if you're watching this live today, maybe just look up and see if there's anything in your area. Some pizza places are doing like a pie deal because it's considered a pie too. So that's the little nerd in me, but I'm like, hey, if anyone's giving me $3.14 pies, I'm all for it. There we go. Life is sweeter with you. Okay, this will of course take you guys a little longer than it did for me to set up because you have to do it from scratch. But once you have all these pieces, let's show you what to do. So these dies have kind of a little fold on them. So you're just gonna fold that inwards. And you'll notice one of the sides rests, it's a little smaller than the other. So this is the inside one. We need to put adhesive on this flap so that when you close it, you have this fun little cone kind of like this. So I'm just going to put a little bit of double-sided tape because I want something that dries really quickly. But of course, glue would work as well. There's one waffle cone, and then same deal, just fold on both of those lines and then see which one is smaller. I think it's just the one on the right here. That one's getting just a little bit of tape on the flap so that I can close it up nicely. And now these ice cream layers, they're meant for you to be able to do a variety of things. So you can either like tuck this here and then you could cut one and have it just sitting in the top. But what I decided to do was I'm just going to put two dimensionals up in the top part of my cones and I'm going to build my ice cream kind of just above the cone itself. I wanted to show as much of the waffle as I could. So um, because my card I decided to go the yellow pink purple route for the ice cream I went in the reverse order. I went yellow pink purple going up. So that's my rationale of course, these are your cards, so do whatever you wish with them. Okay, starting with yellow, I'm going to just put this right over top of the cone so that I can't see any of that bottom. And this looks like a really stubby ice cream now. <laughs> so you definitely need the layers if you're doing it this way because it just doesn't look right otherwise, okay? So we're not going to do any more dimensionals on the ice cream. We're simply going to put a little bit of adhesive on the top of the ice cream and then add the next scoop right on top of that. Oh. One and and the last layer we need one more layer here oh up on top now when you cut these out with the die they do have this little indent you see that sort of right there that's for the cherry so the cherry has a place to sit inside your little um, ice cream scoop. Okay, so the cherries are kind of tiny, so the easiest thing might just be to put a dot of glue on the back of the body. Don't worry about the stem because that's hanging off your ice cream. You don't want, you don't want glue all over the project. So you can kind of see here, it's maybe a little tricky to see, but hopefully this little Yep, that's where I'm going to slide my, my little cherry into. What'd you do? Hold it up for you. There we go. So it just, just slides in. 
kind of like that. Same with the other one here. Kind of perfect just for a nail to get in there. Slide him in. And I mentioned you might want your wink of Stella. So that's um, that's the fun part here is you can always just take the wink of Stella and color your cherry to give it a little bit of glitter. You could even color your ice cream too if you wanted, but I just think the cherry with a little bit of that shimmer is really adorable. Okay, so there's your two ice cream cones. We're going to mount them onto our circles now. So just give me two seconds here. I just wanna move that down a tiny bit. Okay, so on the back of number one, we're going to put dimensionals all over our cone. And then this one I ended up putting on at our crooked angle. There we go. At just a slight angle because I wanted, wanted it to kind of be offset. So now for my second one, I want dimensionals in this empty white space. So I want it to kind of sit right there. So I'm just going to put the dimensionals instead of on the little cone, I'm just going to put them right in here so that my ice cream has something to sit on. Like. Now, if you're having trouble with your ice cream cones themselves kind of flopping backwards, um, you might notice they're would put two dimensionals kind of stacked one on top of each other in the back there. One dimensional won't be enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take two dimensionals and stack them. And then I'm sticking this just one tower in behind my ice cream cone here. And then one tower in behind the other one just to give it a little bit of lift. Once you get the sentiment on there and stuff, it'll help too. But for now, it's, it's just kind of nice to have. Okay, so there we go. There's this section. Now our background should be dry enough that we can bring our base in and attach it. You'll probably notice it has dried with sort of a bend. So if you've got time, you can put this under something heavy, you could heat it and try to kind of soften that out a little bit, but I don't. So I'm just gonna take my bone folder from the back and just kind of gently work it the opposite direction. And then when I put my adhesive on, I'm gonna cover the whole perimeter. I'm not going to be stingy. I'm just going to do the whole perimeter here and that should help strengthen this paper and kind of work it into the shape it should be. Even one across the middle is probably a good choice. There we go. And this can be attached to your card front. Okay, so again, keep in mind which way you want your colors to go. I wanted the dark on the bottom, but it is completely up to you. Okay, there's my fun background. We're going to add our waffles in place. So I put them very randomly, kind of one up in the top section and one down in the bottom here. And the easiest thing to do, just set them in place and realize that this center piece is gonna cover most of the, um, the bottom. So all we're doing is just a tiny bit of tape kind of right across whatever part is going to be hidden underneath your circle. And then it just saves you a lot of work. You don't have to try and attach these pieces that are rather challenging to attach. All right, a little bit more dimensionalizing here. 
We've got dimensionals now all over the back of the circle. And this decal, if you will, goes kind of right in the middle of your card front. And then we did leave ourselves a nice amount of space here so we can pop our sentiment up. And because these are so high, we're going to do that same technique as we did um, behind the ice cream cones. We're going to put one layer of dimensionals down first, then we're going to stack second dimensional on top and that's going to give you a nice tall little um, buffer so that when you put this guy on it will be even with oops crooked <laughs> crooked but even with your ice cream cones okay still crooked at least looks crooked on the screen looks Good to me, but maybe we'll just see. Come here, buddy. There, that's better. All right, and there you go. Life is sweeter with you. To see that. Oh yeah. There you go. Thanks for tuning in for our birthday edition of Show Me How It's Done. I do this every week, so make sure to like and subscribe to my channel so that you get notifications of when I'm live. And then, of course, um, make comments. Tell me what you're enjoying, what you might want to see in the future. And thank you so much to those of you guys who are watching. I will see you guys next week, and we will be chatting probably about one of my like really favorite sweets lately the playing in the rain suite so i have one more fun card for you next week featuring a shaker technique with that i'll see you guys later bye